Well, you've all heard the numbers. Until trading opened flat Thursday, Wall Street was full of cheery talk all week. Some of the country's biggest earners reporting increased profits. New York-based bank J.P. Morgan reported its third quarter profit rose 23%. Computer chip giant Intel's reporting revenues of more than $11 billion, a record. And they're all supposed to be leading indicators for an economic bounce back that will eventually trickle from Wall Street to Main Street. But will it? Workers at the country's largest food services corporation want us to take a closer look. Sodexo cleared a billion dollars in profits last year, even as the crisis struck. But its workers earn as little as $8.27 an hour, low enough to qualify for food stamps. Is that the new normal? To wake people up, Sodexo workers are going on strike at Lehigh Valley Hospitals in Allentown, Pennsylvania, at Highland Park Public Schools in Highland Park, New Jersey, Morehouse College in Atlanta, Tulane University in New Orleans, and just this weekend, Ohio State University concession workers walked out during a Saturday football game. What's the goal beyond making us think? What do their stories tell us about the relationship of high profits to poorly paid work? We'll hear from Autumn Weintraub, director of the multi-services campaign Clean Up Sodexo, and Marsha Snell, a Sodexo concession worker in Columbus, next. The reality is that you know, the folks that are hiring the workers are running that cafeteria, big multinational corporations that don't care about everyday working families. Not taking it lying down. Coming to you first off, um, Autumn, why is this campaign so significant? I mean, I'm struck that you're taking action in so many places at once. How are you doing it? Thank you, Laura. <laughs> yes, we're in uh, 11 different states in this country uh, taking action. Workers are either doing actions or they're on strike. Sodexo is one of the largest companies, not just in this country, but in the world. It's the 22nd largest company in the world. It operates in 80 different countries. In the United States, it's all over this country. And workers earn as little as $7.50 an hour. And in this economy, as you just said, where things are looking up supposedly, uh, we need to really take a look at that activism that's happening with workers in this country who are fighting for their communities. Marsha, what should people know about the life of, of a Sodexo worker? I mean, and if, the, if this became the real normal for, for workers across this country, what would they be looking at? Sodexo uh, keeps people like on a part-time status so they don't receive any benefits. They don't uh, get health care. They, uh, uh, for 10 years I've worked for Sodexo and I've been considered a seasonal worker even though I worked year round for them and I didn't get any benefits. I raised my kids on welfare. I got a government check. I got food stamps and I also got a health card from the government. So this is work for a company that's making billions of dollars in profits but in a way we the taxpayers have to help out because they won't pay people living wages. One of the things that the Sodexo workers in Columbus are doing, Autumn, is a tour. Tell me a little bit about the tour, then we'll play a clip. Uh, part of the workers uh, across the country are on strike because they're trying to organize a union to fight for their communities, to fight for better conditions. And in response, Sodexo has retaliated against workers by intimidating them, by threatening them, by firing them. And workers are highlighting that the reason why they're trying to form a union in the first place is for their own jobs, for their own families, but also our communities. And what the Ohio workers did this past week was highlight what's happened to our communities over the past years. Where there used to be good jobs, there are no longer good jobs. And what's left are these service jobs by multi-million dollar global corporations who are paying workers poverty wages. All right, here's a clip from the Hilltop Tour organized by those trying to organize a union among the Sodexo workers. The person you're going to see right here is actually Marsha's daughter, Katie Snell, talking about her grandfather who worked for GM. 
The job did provide him with enough money to raise and support eight children, um, but when he got laid off from that job, he his only option were low-wage service sector jobs. So he got employed at Sodexo, and he worked there uh, all the way up until uh, a month before he died, which was this past year, and he died when he was 87 years old. And um, he always taught us um, to work hard, and he had a very high value for that. And I am positive that he would be devastated if he knew that his kids and his grandchildren had to work at Sodexo for the rest of our lives to pay our bills. Marsha, good job by your daughter there. Um, you, the, the tour went past the GM factory where it used to be. It went then to a food pantry. It went through neighborhoods where people have been foreclosed on because they couldn't pay their mortgages. And then it went to the hospital. Why? Well, because people don't have health care, so they end up going to the hospital for all their medical needs. And because they have to see you, and so you get sick, you have no choice but to go to the hospital because you have no other medical insurance. What happened to you? Um, I was supposed to take a medicine called Plavix to keep my arteries open. I couldn't afford it because I was only a seasonal employee. And so I stopped taking it. And this past July, I ended up in the hospital with triple bypass surgery that I couldn't afford either. Coming back to the sort of national picture, Autumn, I mean, Marsha's story is awful. It's not atypical. The SEIU is the union organizing here. What's the vision? And is this a realistic vision, a mass organizing campaign at a time when jobs are so scarce, people are happy to have any kind of work? At a time where we're running into the midterm elections, you're seeing workers that are standing up. Right? This is the only way that things are going to change, is if workers take things into their own hands, begin organizing, have collective action to hold multinational companies accountable for what's happening to our economy. And this is a way to change things, and these workers are going to do it. What do you say, Marsha? Are, are you afraid of, of losing the job that you do have? And what do you say to people that say, you know, I'd love to join you, but I don't want to get fired? I don't want to get fired. But uh, I would like to see this be a better job that we can support our families on. I've given this job 10 years of my life. I want this job to give me back something. And I don't mind earning it. And there are people at my job who said, go out and fight for me. And they're too scared to fight with us. So we will keep fighting for them and for everyone. Do you feel, Autumn, in this last minute that we have, that there are any political candidates who really are listening to, to folks like you? I mean, the Tea Party people say they represent hard done by regular folks. Right, but they really represent corporate interests. We know where their funding is coming from. The real people who are going to make a difference are workers like Marsha, workers like Genevieve Resper in Pennsylvania, who has to choose between paying for her gas or feeding her children. Those are the people that are really going to make a difference, and that's where the change is going to come from. So where do people go if they want to help or if they want to find out more? They should go to cleanupsodexo.org. All right. There'll be more information at our website, and we'll go out with one more clip from the Hilltop Tour by the Sodexo workers. There's more information at our website, as I said, grittv.org. I'm having a struggle to get clothes for my kids. Um, which I don't have now, so I got to go to free clothing stores because I can't afford to even go to a thrift stop. And uh, I just want something, you know, with respect at work, no favoritism like they have it there, and to be able to afford the necessities that we need.